Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Susan Lynn and I'm a psychic medium. Today we're gonna to talk about messages from spirit, specifically your spirit guides. We all have spirit guides. People often ask me a lot, I don't know why, uh, do I have a guide? My gosh, of course you do. All humans have guides, okay? All of us here on earth have spirit guides and they're assigned to us uh, sometimes at birth and then we are able to add more spirit guides to our team as we need. Wow, pretty cool, huh? Exactly, so I recently added two new spirit guides to my team. I added a specific spirit guide that helps me with uh, staying safe. Um, I'm a skywalker, I'm a ghost walker, right? I cross ghost over the veil to the light and then at night I'm out astral uh, traveling. Um, this is not anything that I chose consciously this is just what i do and i think a lot of you do as well but i was running into some issues and i wanted to have a little bit more um help let's just say i do call on archangel michael that light just went off <laughs> yeah right okay um i'm not even going to take time in the I, this is supposed to be a quick video <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be a quick video. Okay, I'm not gonna take the time to find out why that light went off. I'm just going to continue to go forward. Maybe that's a thumbs up for getting the extra guide, right? So I got the extra guide uh, who is specifically here as my uh, sort of bodyguard. That's what they're just telling me. He is my bodyguard. He travels with me all the time. Now, I have a new guy, brand new, one week ago. His name is Daniel. And, um, and he is here to help me understand energy. His whole uh, purpose is to help me translate energy. So obviously I work in the field of energy. When I do psychic readings, that's energy. I'm reading energy. When I'm talking to your loved ones that have crossed over the veil on the other side, I'm reading energy. Truth be told, everything is energy. Physicist Einstein understood this us not so much right it's a little bit too big of a concept for us humans especially right now but so i added two new guides you can add new guides too all you need to do is ask for it and um and it would it will happen now you may be having a problem like uh well i don't even know who my guides are or i don't even know what they're doing right i mean i can assure you that they're not sitting in the break room drinking coffee and eating donuts well, maybe some of them are, but anyway, mine aren't because mine are against donuts for sure. But yours might be really cool like that, in which case, good on you because I wish I had those guides. I don't know how much I wish I had those guides. Anyway, I digress again. So I'm trying to keep this, you know, focused. Okay, I need to tell you about something that happened recently because I want you to understand how you get messages from your spirit guides and or from your loved ones, okay? Now, I've often talked about animals, you know, when you see a cardinal or a blue jay or a butterfly or a squirrel or any animal that acts out of its normal behavior. It's not normal for a wild bird to perch on your window seal and then peck at your window for five complete minutes. That would not be normal, right? It wouldn't be normal for the squirrel to scamper up to your uh, sliding glass door, put his little paws on it, and look inside for several minutes. Unless somebody's feeding the squirrel, the squirrel has adapted to that behavior. Um, now, how do you know, for you skeptics, and I'm with you, cynics and skeptics, I get it. How do you know your neighbor isn't doing it? And the squirrel got confused and went to your house instead of the neighbor's house and thought, well, heck, this neighborhood is awesome. Everybody's gonna feed me as long as I just put my little paws on the window and ask, how do you know? Well, you know, because if a squirrel is conditioned to do that, that squirrel's gonna do that multiple times, right? Not just uh, once and never again. It's gonna happen once a week, twice a week, three times a week. Well, that's conditioning. That squirrel has been conditioned, right? Same thing with any wild animal. If, if they're doing something out of the ordinary, but they're doing it multiple times at your house or wherever it is, then that's a condition issue. That's not spirit, okay? I mean, it could be spirit, but 
be lazy spirits. But anyway, um, so this is like something that happened once and never, ever happened again. That's spirit. Okay, they're sending you a message. What's the message? We got your back. We love you. We're with you. You know, when we see repeating numbers, which my God, this holiday season, I got blasted with repeating numbers. It doesn't happen for me continuously. It seems to happen in bunches, right? Um, you can look up those repeating numbers like 111, 444, 555. You can look those up. You can look up angel numbers. And then and, and what they'll do is they'll distill, meaning reduce that 555 into some single number. And then you can kind of figure out what message specifically uh, Spirit is trying to give you. Okay. Um, there's, or you can just, fives are change, right? Four is foundation, right? Uh, basically, if you just know one through 10, you can pretty much figure it out yourself, right? Um, now, it's up to you, it's up to you to discern the message, right? And this leads me into something that happened. I was getting these repeating numbers and they were fours. Not a number I typically get. I typically get the usual 111, which is like spirit going, hey, we got your back, we're with you, you're doing a good job, we applauding you, um, you know, we're here with you, all those kinds of things. I started getting fours right before the Christmas holiday. We're actually like Christmas Eve and 444, four, four, but also 544, four, 344. Four. 144. So if there's a double four in it, you that's still a repeating number, even if it's not 444. So when this started happening three times in one day, to me, for my own, what I've experienced and what I know about my experiences, that's a lot. If I get a number once every day for three days, that's like, ding, pay attention. That kind of gets my attention. If I get them two a day, hmm, something's going on. If I get them three times a day, that's the guides basically banging me on the head with a hammer, which, you know, they often have to do to say, Susan, 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 you know, come on, I'm trying to talk to you here. Pay attention. You know, the kid in the classroom that's like this, you know, like, I wonder about trees, you know, and the, and the spirit guides are like, you know, hello, hello. <laughs> so that's what happened, right? I was getting these four, 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 fours. And to be honest with you guys, you guys know I always am. I share my life like an open book so that you guys can learn while I'm learning. We're all learning together. I didn't pay any attention. <laughs> I know that doesn't shock some of you. <laughs> I didn't pay any attention. I was like, oh, fours. Cool. Well, the third day of three times a day, I was like, uh oh, I got to pay attention. This is like for real. They're for real trying to get my attention and tell me something. So I started sort of I screenshot them on my phone is how I typically see them. But I also saw them like on the clock on my stove or, you know, microwave. I saw them other places. So I started paying attention to how many I was getting. Then um, some of you that have watched this channel a long time know that my guides and my loved ones talk to me uh, with balls. Did you see the light go on and then come off again? I don't know if this is visible to you guys, but it just came on and off. So clearly somebody's happy about this video, I think. This is, an, this is a big, huge, I had to prop it up so you guys could see it. This is probably four years worth of balls. I don't find them all the time. They are a sign that my guides and my loved ones use to communicate with me. Uh, because if I have a ball, I would just do this with it, right? I would I would throw it on the wall and drive everybody crazy. And I'm not a sporty person. It's just something, you know, maybe in a past life I was, you know, I, I was an athlete because <laughs> I'm not one in this life, I'll tell you that. Unless eating donuts qualifies, which case I got that covered. Um, and cheese. But anyway, so, you know, like this is what I would do. I just kind of walk around and throw a ball, right? Like this. So this is something that would catch my eye. Wow, while I was watching this, I noticed that I picked the one ball out of all of those balls that has the feather attached to it. I did a video on this before. This ball, when I picked it up on the, in the mud, which is why it's dirty, it had an actual white feather attached to it. I, they also leave me feathers and other things um, that they know will catch my eye. Once your guides know that something works for you, they're gonna use it. So. 
It may be pennies for you. It may be uh, heart-shaped things. Maybe you walk around and you happen to just be a person that can see hearts in different things, leaves, uh, designs, uh, wherever. Maybe that's your thing. I have a friend who, swear to God, finds four-leaf clovers. She really does. Um, and it makes me mad because I can't find them. Um, she doesn't find them all the time, but I would say on average once a year. And she doesn't like go looking for them. It's not her. It's not even a hobby. It's just whenever she's out walking, they stand out to her. The same way balls stand out to me. To me, they're, it's almost like there's a glow around them. Like I've had friends walk right past a ball and I'm like, did you not see this? And they're like, no, you know what I mean? But to me, it's glowing. It's like ding, 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 ding. Boy, that ball was really dirty and sandy. Anyway, um, again, I digress. Here we are. I'm talking about signs. You may get different signs. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is believe it, right? Believe it. If you believe it, they will work with you more and give you more signs. Okay. Um, look, what's the worst thing that can happen? you get a big old container of dirty balls or you know that you have spirit guides and they're following you but i'm gonna go one step more so remember i was seeing fours which i don't normally see here i am walking my dog i will likely put a picture on the screen here and i'm in an alley um in this neighborhood there's alleys and they're not paved most of them um and um I was walking and I see this. This is a playing card um, and it's quite mangled. And there, there was nothing else. There was no trash. Uh, there was no nothing. There's just this laying right in the middle of my path. I didn't have to walk five steps in any direction. It was literally in the path of my feet. I would have stepped on it. I stopped, I looked at it and I thought, that's a playing card. Hmm. Now, what do you think I did? No, I didn't pick it up. I went past it because, because I'm just like that, right? I thought, well, it's a playing card, whatever, right? So I walked about one, two, three steps past this and I stopped because I work with my guides on a daily basis. I know when there's energy around something, I know when it's something I'm supposed to do. And some, I'm sure that a lot of you guys have thought, I don't know why I just needed to pull over and have my tires checked. I don't know why. And when I did, I found a nail in my tire, right? How many times in your life have you said, I don't know why I did this, but then this happened. Well, when you say, I don't know why that's called, you might as well insert the spirit guides directed me. My angels directed me. Okay. When you say I had the craziest idea, I don't know what, what I was thinking when I decided to sign up for school at 40 years old. Well, I know what the craziest idea and I knew who, what was thinking your spirit guides. If, if you can't explain it, then you can't explain it because it's them. So I turned around, went back. Now this is scuzzy. It's dirty. In fact, I swear in my hands. Anyway, that ball got dirt all over, golly. Anyway, um, it's it was dirty, so I kicked it with my shoe. <laughs> I mean, I'm in an alley, right? And, it, and I finally got it to flip over. Now, what do you think, what do you think this card is? What number do you think this card is? I mean, you don't have to be a genius at this point to figure this out, right? A four. Now, at this point, I had to literally sit down and have a conversation with my guides. What in the world are you trying to tell me? I, I had to, I, I mean, this is a physical manifestation of their message to me. Now I'm not saying that this popped out of the ether from the fifth or 10th dimension. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it likely fell out of a garbage truck or something. I mean, it's nasty, but at the same time, I think that the spirit guides had a, had a little helping hand to make this fall out of the garbage truck at that point in that alley that I was walking in. And you want to know what else? I don't even walk in alleys anymore because I've had a problem with loose dogs. 
So I don't even go down alleys anymore. This is not an alley that I normally go down. So on top of that, they had to understand that I would go down that specific alley that specific day to get this specific message. Now, what if I didn't go down that alley? Because after all, we all have free will. Of course we do. I mean, I'm living proof of that. <laughs> but they would have just, they would have just created another message for me in another way. Um, to get this to me. Um, they're quite busy over there. I personally have missed opportunities that I was supposed to do, that I was supposed to meet a group of people. And I would have been on my psychic journey a lot earlier in my life, but I chose not to do this thing, which then postponed me meeting all those people by three years. Three years, people. Took them three years for me to meet all of them again. And I did, I met them at a holiday party and we all had one person in common, which I thought was bizarre because I didn't know any of these people. Actually, my neighbor who I just met brought me to this party. I didn't know any of them. The light just came on and off again. My God, look, there's the light. Now we're going to watch it. <laughs> okay. I went to this, um, this party and I met these people that I, that it turns out all of them had been at this psychic class that I was supposed to take three years earlier. And the woman teaching the psychic class told me you're supposed to be in this class, Susan. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I'm too busy with work and it's not a good time for me. I'll take the next class, which I did. But meeting that group of people three years later is what launched me on my path. It took me three years to find those people again. So maybe this wouldn't have taken them three years to put another four in front of me. Maybe they would have done it in a different way. Maybe I would have seen a license plate. Maybe I would have seen it someplace else, right? So, so they're not, it's not like you miss it and it's gone forever. Your guides are always working to guide you, right? But because we have free will, they can't just come in and make it happen for us. That's not allowed. If we ask them and give them permission, then they can help us more for sure. They could communicate with us more for sure, but they can't do it for us. That's where the line is drawn. So what, so now I have, um, now I have an interesting development in my four. Do I not? I have a spade. I have a four of spades. What in the heck does a spade mean now? Well, now they got my attention because now it's just fours. Now it's a spade and I need to know. I mean, I really do need to know. So I know some of you guys read cards as tarot. Um, I don't, I didn't know who, which one of you. So I didn't know who to contact. So I just Googled it. And um, I'm going to tell you briefly what I found out about spades. Um, Actually, I'm going to tell you briefly what I found out about force. Four is foundation. Four legs to a table, right? So you have foundation with four. They're telling you, you've created the foundation. You have a foundation. What do you do with a foundation? You build upon it. You put a foundation of a house down. You build the house. You have a foundation, you have a floor, maybe you can put another floor. You can build up on the foundation. You have a solid foundation for which to build, right? So that's what they're telling me. Now, the spade um, had something to do with a block. It had something to do with having a block. Now, I know you guys are gonna comment like crazy, which I welcome, uh, about you people, especially that read tarot through cards, which is the way people read divinely, you know, had, had, that's the way people did readings before we had the tarot, right? Is they used other methods like playing cards or even tea leaves or something like that. So, you know, feel free to comment, but I feel like what they were telling me is I have a block about the fact about my foundation. I don't believe my foundation is strong. I don't believe my foundation is, um, maybe I don't even believe I have a foundation. 
right? I mean, Virgos, we're always building new things. We never stop to look at our progress, right? We never, uh, and, and this goes for all everybody. Often we are on um, constantly adding more or trying to achieve more and we never stop to look at what we've done and, and to say, oh, oh, wait, wow, wait, this foundation is done. Now I can build on the foundation. So I think what, what I've been trying to do is build the foundation forever. And they're saying, my God, lady, the foundation is done. <laughs> it's done. Stop. Build on that. Build, build your house on your foundation, right? So I want to tell you one other thing that happened that day. Um, and I will put pictures up of all of this as if this wasn't enough of a sign. Guess what I found balls. Now, again, it was the, I don't know, day after two days after Christmas, this was in the street. Now, of course, kids get toys. They play with toys. They maybe they've got a gun that shoots balls and they left them in the street. I mean, sure. I can explain this. I can explain this all day long, but I can't explain this. You know, I can't explain this. Okay, so that is a lot of balls. That's a lot of explaining to do. And I find them um, when I'm tr doing something big. It's, it's like an explanation point of, we got your back. Yes, you're on the right track. Yes, we are here to support you, right? It's the same thing with feathers, right? Um, we all often find feathers or, you know, like I said, there's signs come in so many ways. You might have a dream. That could be your sign. That could be your way of working with your guides, right? It's, it's open-ended. It could be anything. So hopefully this has helped you um, and you understand now how you could work with your guides and how they're working with you and how you can get new guides and how you have guides. And sometimes your guides are even family members. Uh, typically in my experience, when I'm doing readings, I see that they're family members that are grandparents um, a lot of times, sometimes ones that you've never met. Um, and they, they sort of tend to have a lot more um, interest or impact or uh, concentration on younger kids, I find grandparents that, that have never met these children, um, very prominent, caught it, caught you on camera. Anyway, I've, I, I find that grandparents really do have an impact on these kids' lives. As they get older, they sort of become less involved, right? So as a 30, 40, 50 year old, that same grandparent that was a guide in this young child's life might simply be just way far away from you, but still sort of watching you, but not quite so close. So there's just a lot to know about spirit guides, right? But the thing I want you to know is you have them, they love you, they're your guide team, they're for you, they're assigned to you, and they're ready to help you, okay? So hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, please do me a favor, like the video and subscribe because I have a lot more content coming like this. Uh, so I think that you might be interested in it. Also, we're going to be going through this big ascension. Believe me when I say that, uh, the veil is thinning, which means that we're going to have a lot more interaction with beings and energies on the other side of the veil. It's as if a fence that has been keeping us two types of energy separate is now thinning or dropping down so that the energies can now mix, which means that you're gonna have more kind of interactions with them and you're probably gonna have more questions about it. I'm your girl, I'm gonna be here helping you through that. I can't believe I just said that. Um, <laughs> because it's going to be a lot and I am going to help you guys. It's, it's, um, it's one of the roles I'm playing here on earth is to help people cross the veil, which I learned recently in an Akashic records reading. So, um, meaning people, humans, you and me cross the veil, meaning psychic abilities, uh, intuition, using those things in your life on a daily basis to help us. 
because that's where we're going as human beings. Again, thanks again for joining me. Much love to everyone. You guys take care. We'll see you guys soon right here on this channel.